Tiffany Patrick, and we want to keep you in the know. Our back to school giveaway date is August 8th at 9 a.m. If you would like to support the giveaway, there's a special button to give towards back to school outreach and you're still able to drop off donated items for the backpacks during regular business hours. We will still have physicals available for children who need them and there will be a survey going out for all previous back to school participants to help us be prepared for this year's needs. Remember, the Potter's House Christian Academy is now accepting fall enrollment. For more information, call the high school at 904-695-2837 or the lower school at 904-786-0028. If you'd like to apply for the Step Up for Students scholarship, go to www.stepupforstudents.org and complete an application. Good morning, Potter's House family. This is Brother Travis Williams here with an update from the Potter's House Campus Ministry. As many of you guys have seen, we still have our scholarship, our annual scholarship giveaway for our college students happening right now. The deadline is quickly approaching, which is August the 7th. We're asking our college students, our traditional college students, being high school seniors going into college, or our existing students, to please submit the applications at tphim.org forward slash scholarship. And we're also asking you, our faithful members, to please give and be a blessing to these students. Now they need the opportunity to be able to support them financially more than ever. You can designate your giving either online or in person by designating it to TPHIM Scholarship Giveaway. Also, we'll have a Zoom meeting with our existing students as well. Normally we get a chance to do this in person, but times are a little bit different. And so on August the 10th at 6 p.m., we'll be having a Zoom call with the parents of our college students as well as our existing college students as well. We want to learn about your needs, what does this upcoming semester look like for your school, and how can we help meet those needs. You can RSVP for the details of the Zoom to tphcampusministry at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Saints tonight, we will have a special night of prayer as our students, teachers, and staff head back to school. Join us at 6 p.m. as we cover our campuses, homes, and classrooms. Then we'll partake of the Lord's Supper together. It will all happen online at 6 p.m. So join us virtually. to use when you register. Vacation Bible School will be held this week, August 3rd through the 7th. Elementary school ages will meet 8.30 a.m. to 12 noon, and middle school and high school will meet in the evenings from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. You can still register your child today via our website at tphim.org. And we're asking that during this time, which is tough for everyone, that you continue to sow so that we can continue to care for those in our community and far beyond. Remember, there are four ways that you can give via text, online, through our app, and by mail. We thank you for your faithfulness and generosity to our ministry. Let's continue to pray for our Bishop and First Lady, and let's continue to love and pray for one another. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Tiffany Patrick, and you are now in the know. So I've come tonight to tell you that God wants us to have a peaceful state of mind. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. I don't have the answers to all those things I just said. I'm not trying to do that. And I'm not trying to downplay the reality of that and the middle of the problem that go along with that, the sickness that it is. But I'm saying the Bible says that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but that of power and love and a sound mind. And I'm saying that the Bible says to those of us who are believers that we can at least pull on the fact that he'll keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind stayed on him because he trusts or we trust in him perfect peace is promised by God the way to acquire it though is according to the text is to stay fixed our mind stayed on him even in the midst of our turmoil even in the midst of social upheaval even in the midst of moral decline a seemingly endless pandemic that we're in and the spiritual drought that I'm feeling in the life of so many people we still got to fix our minds on him. 
Thank you for logging on for our virtual worship experience here at the Potter's House International Ministries, located in the bold city of Jacksonville, Florida. And although we have been corporately separated, the church is still alive and well. Families are getting closer, living rooms have become sanctuaries, and your digital devices have become instruments to connect to God. Ministry continues beyond the four walls of the church as we continue to meet the needs of our local community, blessing nearly a thousand frontliners with free meals through our COVID-19 relief fund and feeding hundreds globally through our India Global Missions. Many of you have been blessed and felt the presence of God through our live streams on Facebook, YouTube, and our website. And we still need you to help us reach more. So share this feed now, because our world needs the word like never before. Keep giving, because your gifts help us continue kingdom ministry. Remember, you can give at any time during this virtual service. There's text giving. Just text the word give to 904-601-1695. You can give online at tphim.org or through our Ministry One app. Or mailing your gifts to TPHIM at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida, 32205. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds as we start worship here at the Potter's House. Somebody to shout in this house right now. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. We've entered the month of August, the eighth month of the year, meaning that God is about to do a new thing in us, a new beginning, a new breakthrough, a new healing, a fresh praise, a fresh word. And I just want to know, are you ready for it? Well, if you're ready, put those hands together. Give God a praise in the house, at your house, as we start worship here at the Potter's House. Somebody shout hallelujah! Come on, somebody shout hallelujah! Come on, I'm ready to give them glory in this place. Hallelujah! Anybody got a praise deep down inside of them that's ready to come out? Come on, to shout to the Lord if you got a praise deep down inside and you ready to get it out. Hallelujah! Thank you, God. Come on, put those hands together. Thank you, God. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Here we go, right here. Come on, there's the praise. Say, there's a praise in my heart, and I gotta get it out. Come on, somebody sing. If I try to contain it, it will just take over me. For all that you've done and all that you are, you're the righteous, you're the righteous one. one. So with my hands up, raised, my hands up raised, I will lift my voice. My voice I will Come on, somebody sing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah to your father. Come on, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah to your Lord.
that to be praised. Our God is great. If you know that, can you lift your hands in this place? Can you lift your hands if you're watching from home or at your job? And you're able to lift your hands up. Somebody begins to confess that their God is great in this place. Say, water you turn, say, water you turn into wine. Woo. Say, open, open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Say, none like you, God. None like you. Say, into the, into the darkness you shine. Out of the out of the ashes we rise. Yeah. There's no one like you. None like you. None like you. Come on, somebody declare it. See, our God is high. Our God is greater. Thank you, God. Our God is stronger. Yeah. God, you are higher than it. Come on, somebody confess that now. Say, declare it in this place. Say, awesome and power, our God. One more turn. God, so what are you turning into? What are you turning into? Wine. We sing about Jesus. Open the eyes of the blind. Yes. There's no one like you. Come on, how many really know there's none like him? If you know that, just begin to worship and lift your hands and declare this in this place yeah say into the into the darkness you shine sing out of the ashes out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you thank you god none like none you Declare it, sing our God is our God is greater, sing our God is stronger, sing God you are higher than any our God is here, awesome and power, our God. Sing our God, come on, sing it again. Sing our God is great, our God is greater, our God is stronger, and your heart. Awesome and power, awesome and power, our 
room right now. Somebody begin to just walk around your living room, walk around your home, and just begin to say, If my God is for me, what can stand against me? Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome. Awesome and power. Our God. Our God, yeah. Our God. One more time, sing our God. Yeah. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Can you lift your hands in this place? He is a great God. He is a healer, awesome in power, perfect in all his ways. And we must understand that we must worship him. And we can only worship him in spirit and in truth so if you don't mind if you haven't already lift your hands lay aside everything that's fleshly that you're worried about that you're thinking about lay aside the weak it's been a tough one for some it's been a great one for others but we are here we are living so if you got breath in your lungs and that the Holy Spirit lives within you, I need you to lift your hands and begin to worship. And begin to worship. Listen. We worship you. Help me say we worship. We worship you in the spirit. Say so we, we worship you in the truth. Come on, lift your hands out there. Say we, we worship you in the spirit. See, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're Sing it again, say we worship. We worship you in the spirit. Say we worship. We worship you in the truth. Say we worship. We worship you in the spirit. See, that's what we're gonna do.
it up again and say, we worship you. We worship you in the Spirit. We worship you, Lord. We worship you in the truth. We worship you. We worship you in the Spirit. That's what we want to do. That's what we're going to do. Into the Holy of Holies. Into the Holy of Holies. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Into the Holy of Holies. That's where, that's where I wanna be. We worship you, O oh King. We worship you in the Spirit. All glory and honor and power. We worship you in the truth. All glory to your name. We worship you in the This is it's an atmosphere of breakthrough, atmosphere of deliverance. Come on, at home, create a sanctuary. Create an atmosphere. While we're at it, prayers go up for Bishop Vance Olds and the Olds family. 
prayers go up for the Haynes family and the Hunter family. Prayers up for the Hill and the McGriff family. Continue prayer for our school and our schools and our children in this atmosphere. Heaven is open over us. God hears our petition. So Father God, now in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight for these that we've called out by name. We pray today, Lord God, that you would move, that you would move right now. God, we pray today in Jesus' name that you would intervene in a supernatural way. You already intervened in every affair of our life, but in a supernatural way. Retard the works of the enemy in a supernatural way. Cease the violence in a supernatural way, God. Allow us, Lord God, to live victoriously and to walk victoriously. God, cancel this COVID-19 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do it. And so we're just asking you to do it. We believe in the supernatural. 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 We believe in miracles. We believe in miracles. And we need one. So Father God, now in the name of the Lord Jesus, move on every listener, everybody under the sound of my voice. Let them know that you hear and that you care. Bless us with this word today. Let us hear it and apply it to our lives. Let us be better when we leave here today. Let everybody, Lord God, that's come close to experiencing failure or quitting or giving up or changing their mind about you, let them lean in today and hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, singers. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Come on. Come on like you mean it. Come on. Come on, here and at home like you mean it. Come on, if you're at home, give him praise. Come on, if you're at home, give him praise. Come on, if you're in the house, give him praise. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Lift those hands at home. Come on. Open your mouth at home. Shabbat. Shout. Shabbat. Come on. Come on. Lift those hands at home. Come on. Jump up. Run. You ain't shouting in a long time. Shout now. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Strike it again. Hit it again. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh Lord, there's a word from the Lord. I don't want to, I got to get through it. God bless you. Be seated if you can here. If you're at home, can't nobody see you. You can stand there and shake your hands and do what you got to do, run in place. But we thank God for all of you. We thank God for what he's doing in our lives today and what he's doing in the lives of his people. There's a story in the book of First Kings chapter 18. It's a story that deals with another prophet. I believe this is a prophetic hour. And I believe we need prophetic utterance. Those of you that are here with me in the house today, you pull and so we can push through to this virtual audience out here and let them know that the Lord is in his holy temple. Amen. To let them know that the presence of the Lord is here. Amen. And let them know that God is going to be here when they return. And I really believe that. And the remnant that are pressing their way, the few that we have, chairs separated, 10 feet apart, front, back. For those of you who are at home and can't see, we don't show. We just want you to know that we're believing God, we're taking all precautions, but we just trust God. There needs to be faith at this hour. And I believe that when it is all said and done, those who have pressed their way and those who have, by faith, come to be in the presence of God, there's gonna be a special, special blessing I don't believe that God's not going to bless others who are not meeting, who are not pressing. That's not what I said. I just said, and I could pronounce again, I believe that there's a special blessing. When the Son of Man find faith on the earth when he returns, and those of you that have demonstrated this kind of faith, the kind of faith that it takes to go to Publix and Home Depot, 
and the kind of faith that it takes to go to your favorite restaurant and to sit down during the week is nothing compared to the faith that it takes to come out to the house of God and be in the house of God in a limited capacity but here nevertheless to give God praise God has been very gracious to us as a ministry and as a people and as a staff and I think we need to hear some of the positive testimonies out here of how God is keeping people and how God is blessing people can y'all say amen God is keeping us. God is blessing us. God is protecting us. And I'm grateful to God for it. I really, really, really am. I really, really, really am. First Kings chapter 18. I'm trying to get there. I got so much stuff up here. I can't even get situated. But if you've got it at home, say, I've got it. Okay, I heard you. All right. First Kings 18. I'm going to read verses 41 through 46. To Javon and Jimmy, God bless y'all. Uh, they had a memorial for Mama this past Friday, and uh, they did well. They they were strong. They did well. Um, Javon got his breakthrough. Talked about y'all little, what do you call them ears? They got elementary ears. When you put your mask on, your ears start pulling down like this. You do little elementary ears, little tiny ears, and. Um, he said they start hurting and little had the mask on, their little ears just be pulled down like this. How many of y'all uh, were sick and tired at first of them little small masks that just didn't seem to fit? People were making them for you and they were about to pull your ear off. Yeah, they just making them too small, making them for little tiny people. And I had to finally find me a company that made them big enough for my huge head. So 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. Thank you, guys. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up eat and drink for there is the sound of abundance of rain so Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant go up now look toward the sea so he went up and looked and said there is nothing and seven times he said, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rolled away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and read ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. <clears throat> Amen. I'm going to read um, verse 43. And he said to his servants, go up now, his servant, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, say it with me, go again. Today I'm going to share from the topic, when it appears not to be working, just keep trying till it does. <laughs> say that with me, when it appears not to be working, come on, just keep trying till it does. Come on, say it loud so they can hear you at home. Everybody say, when it appears not to be working, just keep trying till it does. Father, thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, somebody say, amen. When it doesn't look like it's working, just keep trying. Just keep trying. How many of you already can sense in your spirit that God wants to say something to you about you? Amen. Amen. There's a poem that is more proverbial than it is poetic. By proverbial, I mean it has truth in it that's based on experience. First recorded by Thomas Palmer in the 1800s, it was made popular by William Edward Hickson. And I know you've heard it if you've been to school, it goes something like this. Tis a lesson you should heed, try, try again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. 
you know, we, we shorten everything in the hood. We go, if at first you don't succeed, succeed, try, try again. So it was three times, try, try, try again. So I'm sure you've heard some of the stories of successful people who didn't succeed at first try. All success stories, I don't care what they are, all of the stories have stories of failure and stories of frustrations and stories of defeat built right into them because it's just as simple y'all stuff happens whenever you make up your mind to do something for God or whenever you get on a journey with God stuff is going to happen it's a part of the process so there are Two very familiar processes found in the scriptures. I preached about them for years, even in the 80s. I remember preaching about these, the things that you go through on your way to what God has promised you. One is called the process of time, and the other one is the process of affliction. Time and affliction. It takes time, and along the way, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. So whenever you're going somewhere in God, you're pursuing your destiny and your purpose, it's going to take a while, it's going to be a matter of time, a process of time, and there will be affliction. Nothing we get in life is without a fight. Nothing. Without some type of struggle, some type of opposition. Even when it is God, and this is what people need to learn, even when it is God who opens the door for you to walk through, 1 Corinthians 16, 9 says, you still don't go scot-free. For a great and an effectual door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Paul says, God has given me an opportunity to take this gospel to the ends of the world. Great doors. He's made way for me, made room for me, given me favor with people, Aquila, Priscilla, all the people that I need to help me on my journey. But we still have many adversaries. Anybody listening to me in here at home that know anything about adversaries, roadblocks, hindrances to your progress? Paul said, God led me down the road of adversity and hindrances. Opened the door and boom, I got out there and there they were. Adversaries everywhere. Success stories have these things built into them. But I did say that they were success stories, didn't I? Well, all success stories have something else. They have a time, they have a day or a moment when success is accomplished when the victory is won, when that which is purposed is manifest. It may not happen exactly the way you want it to happen or when you want it to happen, but there's a moment when you can sigh in relief where you can say, I made it. I don't know about y'all, but there have been some times after hell and high water, I get to the other side and say, I made it crossing these red seas of my life, going through these wildernesses in my life, crossing rivers in my life, battling enemy after enemy in my life. And there comes a day when I sigh, the day I've been waiting to exhale, and I can say, I made it. It's that moment that I call, and you might hear me use this word a lot, eventually, eventual victory. Victory is eventual. It is going to happen eventually, after a while. The text says, after that we've suffered a while. The God of all comfort will strengthen us, settle us, establish us, and then we'll give God glory for all the things that he has done. I can, only, I can picture it as, as an athlete standing on a platform that just won uh, the big race, let's say the Olympics, and has the gold medal around his or her neck. Uh, their adrenaline is flowing and reflections of what it took to get there. You know it's racing through their minds, all the hard work. They're thinking about the people that helped them, the coaches that pushed them, the injuries that nagged them. But standing on that podium after the process of time and the process of affliction, the victory makes it all worthwhile. Uh, all that they've gone through, it makes it all 
worthwhile. It's almost like the end justifies the means in a good way. Uh, the end justifying the means is not a good thing. But I'm talking about what they had to go through is how they got the victory. Had they not gone through that, they wouldn't be standing here today. Come on, what came to try to hinder you and slow you down should simply make you better, not bitter. And when someone wins a race or crown, let me keep going. Let me give you some success stories that I didn't, that didn't appear <clears throat> success was inevitable or eventual. Nobody, remember this, nobody just starts successful. Uh, there's a man by the name of Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison is created with inventing the light bulb. When asked about the many thousands of failures he had when trying to create the light bulb, listen to what he says, <laughs> put it on the screen. He says, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. <laughs> yeah, e eventually. Here's another Thomas Edison quote. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. And I think I know a lot of people that way were this close to success but got so tired they quit just a day early, just an hour too quickly. Michael Jordan, the GOAT by many. The GOAT means the greatest of all time. That's the many people who don't appreciate the greatness of LeBron James. Anyway, he was cut from his high school basketball team. And after being cut from the squad, he didn't quit basketball. He kept working, he kept working on his game. He didn't quit, he didn't give up. And now you know he's won numerous titles, championships in the pros, in college, high school. And he has too many personal accolades for me to even begin to mention. But listen to what Jordan has to say about his successful career. Listen to this. He said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Did you see that? He succeeds because he's not afraid to try. And then he succeeds because he's not afraid to try again and again after a setback after failure or after disappointment. Setbacks, failures, failures, and disappointments shouldn't cause us to quit. Should cause us to work even harder and try again and again. Maya Angelou, her voice has brought hope and joy and liberty to the oppressed and the marginalized for years. Uh, but Maya Angelou's childhood was fraught or filled, rather, with painful events. Parents were divorced, uh, passed around to relatives, living from house to house, sexually abused at seven years old. Abuser was uh, sent to prison on her testimony and then released from prison and then murdered. She literally became mute and couldn't talk. She couldn't speak because she thought it was her voice that killed her, her abuser. Telling on him is what caused him to die. She worked the streets. She married and divorced twice, two awful marriages. But through it all, Maya Angelou held on to her passion for that written word and her literary works. Though they rejected early, they were eventually recognized by the entire world community. And here's what she says. There is no failure as long as you learn from your experience. Continue to work and continue to press on for success. Three people said amen. <laughs> there is no failure as long as you learn from your experience. C keep on working and continue to press on for success. We know the stories of Bill Gates, a very wealthy man and one of the richest men in the world. But he dropped out of college at Harvard University. He failed at his first business ventures. He was horrible. But then he says this. Says it's fine to celebrate success, but it is more important to heed the lessons of failure. You know, I've, I've said to people who have uh, mentored me uh, or tried to mentor me over the years or had a role in doing that, and I've had a couple of them tell me, I didn't teach you nothing. And I go, yeah, you taught me a lot. You taught me a whole lot of what not to do. And I think that there are some people who need to learn from your own failures and the failures of others. 
and, and, and watch and then develop and, and use your experiences to get to where God has taken you. A couple more people, Walt Disney. Walt Disney was told that he lacked imagination <laughs> and was fired from many jobs. He experienced over five bankruptcies early in his life. And uh, imagination, oh my God. Listen to what he says. The difference in winning and losing is most often not quitting. Just don't quit. Tell somebody, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. The scripture is replete with don't give up, right? Be not weary and well-doing. In due season, you will reap if you faint to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You know, these things, he says, you just keep going. Keep pressing your way. <laughs> Colonel Sanders, I had some Kentucky Fried Chicken this week. Um, his famous chicken recipe wasn't so popular when he got started. He had to wait till he was 62 years old after trying, watch this. He said he heard 1,009 no's before he heard his first yes. That's how KFC originated. He tried to sell his recipe to restaurants and heard 1,009, nope, it ain't worth nothing, nope. Same recipe that I'm sucking down today, that greasy skin. The original with the hot out the thing and just dr <laughs> thank you colonel for trying again and let me say this as I move to the text as I was researching for these these this message and researching these stories my computer was acting up but I kept trying so with all that said I want to preach now we all should have hopes and dreams and aspirations and goals as the people of God. Is that you? Everybody should have a destiny and a purpose in where they're going. And God equips us with what it takes to reach those goals, to accomplish what we've uh, destined to do and we're destined to become before we die. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hands. God directs the steps of a good person. Acts 13, 22, concerning David, the Bible said in removing Saul, he made David their king, and he testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything that I want him to do. If God is ordering your steps, God calls you, God commissions you, and God expects you to do everything that he wants you to do. Matter of fact, he doesn't leave you alone to go at it for yourself. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God doesn't expect you to quit because he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will perform it. You can be confident that God's got you. You can do everything that he wants you to do. And he himself will literally do it through you for himself for his glory. The Bible says in Philippians 2 that for it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's God who works in you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's only what Christ does through you that will last. So I've learned over these past two weeks after an abundance of funerals that watch this, when we die, it's up to God. When, what time we die is up to God. How we live and what we do before we die is up to us. Yeah, God has a schedule. God knows when it's time to go. We have to just work on our dash, the time between our birth and our death. And we've got to play the hand that was dealt to us, the hand that we've been dealt by God because God is the one that sets the race before us. God is the one that chooses whether our race will be a sprint or a marathon. God is the one that, that, that chooses whether it's going to be over quickly, a sprint, or last a long time, a marathon. But it is the race that he sets before us. And that time is in his hand. People struggling with their faith during hardships is nothing new. There's some people who just feel like it's just too tough right now. That the hand I've been dealt is too tough right now. We're comparing ourselves with ourselves and becoming unwise. Well, why ain't she going through? I live better than her. Well, why ain't he going through? I've done more for God than he has and 
I'm going to tell y'all something. You cannot begin to compare yourselves with yourselves. Don't judge God's working in your life by what he's doing with and in and through somebody else. What God has for you is for you. And what God wants to do with you, he's going to do it with you. Take your eyes off your neighbors. Don't let the Joneses, don't let the Jones, don't let the Joneses get you down. Even in the midst of the time that we're in right now, there's some people that seem to be prospering while some people are yet struggling. But people struggling with faith during these hard times is nothing new. There are many people of faith greater than us called of God. And they sometimes struggled with their faith in God. And I'm glad God allows us to witness them. This is most evident when what they believe, watch this, that they are doing for God is not working. Uh, I mean, make that plain. But there's some people who believe that what they're doing, God has assigned them to do it, but it ain't working. I need about 10 people that kind of know what I'm talking about. You, 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 okay, yes, you said yes to God. God signed you up, and now you're out here, but there's adversaries, roadblocks, stumbling blocks, adversities, and you don't believe that is working, even when what you're doing is specifically working or directed by specifically, God specifically told you to do it. The Bible is replete with heroes of the faith who will tell you straight up, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Now, I may not be going where some of y'all think I'm going. Uh, I could feel, I could feel it. You see, I'm not talking about people who have had flesh failures. I'm, I'm not talking people uh, who, who, who have sinned or who have disobeyed God and, and stuff ain't working. I'm talking about people who have done exactly what they believe God has asked them to do, did it just like God said to do it, and yet nothing happens like you, they believe that God said it would. Now, that's the kind of people I'm talking about. And that's still some of you is a disconnect, but you, you've got to see this in the spirit realm. You're doing everything you're supposed to do, but it ain't working. So the people I speak of biblically are called heroes of the faith because they just didn't quit when it didn't work. They kept trying and eventually they succeeded. So what I'm seeing nowadays, Lord help us, is people who are perplexed over the fact that they're doing what God says to do, and when it does not work or appear to be working, they're quitting, giving up, and start questioning even their faith in God. This is not an hour to be questioning your faith in God. The enemy wants you to do that. That's what tests are for. Jesus would tempt the devil 40 days and 40 nights and the enemy would come to him and each time say to him, if thou be the son of God. Question his relationship with God. And that's what the enemy is trying to get you to do. See you in a bondage. See you in a wilderness. See you going through. See you hungry. See you needy. See you isolated. See you alone. That's where Jesus was. And he came to him and said, if thou be the son of God. Trying to get him to doubt his relationship with the father because of his circumstances and the condition that he was in. Now, I need to know if there's anybody here that has ever had the end enemy come to you and make you doubt your faith in God, doubt your religious preference, doubt your understanding of who God is, made you doubt and made you think, well, I shouldn't have never signed up to this because before I ever signed up to the faith, I ain't have no problem with nothing. Right now, some of y'all, I'll leave that alone. I've come to help somebody today because there's some things happening in our world right now that's got mature saints scratching their heads and asking God, why? Why us? Why now? Why this year? Why this virus? And I've come to help somebody by letting you know I'd like to share with you what I've learned over the years about asking God why. Because I've got victory over asking God why. I stopped asking God why a long time ago. Those who have a proper understanding of the sovereignty of God would be able to relate to me right now because we don't ask why. We know sovereignly he's in control. We ask how long. Y'all miss that. We ask how long. Some of us, you couldn't handle the reason why anyhow. 
you can't handle the truth I, I think we just need to make the adjustment to want to know how long if you get this you're going to be free let me explain david had a history of asking god why as a king that was placed on the throne by God that had issues and often was in predicaments and at the hands of his enemy and fleeing for his life and all this kind of stuff and many times he would say God why why did the heathen rage why why do my enemies triumph over me why why do the wicked seem to prosper God why why am I so hated these are the questions that King David asked but then there came a shift in the line of questioning for David David began to shift in his understanding he began to see that in every situation God delivered him he began to see that though the enemies came against him they stumbled and they fell he began to see that the Lord with the light of his salvation of whom shall he fear the Lord with the strength of his life of whom shall he be afraid they be he began to see that the Lord was his shepherd he should not want he, though he walked through the valley of the shadow of death he didn't have to fear evil for God was with him these are not things he heard about these are things he experienced in his life and it changed his mindset because he began to see that God is in control he understood the sovereignty of God so I'll just share a couple of the Psalms that where he changes his, his questioning from why to how long in Psalm 13 2 he says Lord how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart how long will my enemy triumph over me you see that not why but now it's how long Psalm 94 and 3 says God the wicked get away with murder how long will you let this go on listen not why but how long we have an adversary the devil who walks about as a roaring lion he comes to steal kill and destroy i already know why trouble is coming i already know why pain is here i already know why people are dying i already know why people are sick i already know why things are not happening exactly the way that i would want them to happen it's not why it's how long no longer why am i thinking this way or no longer david said why am i asking why is the wicked getting away with murder david says i'm asking how long is this going to go on how long god are you going to let it continue come on y'all remember the refiner sits by the fire he knows how much we can bear he will not allow you to be tempted or tested or tried above that which you are able but with that temptation test and trial he'll make means for you to escape that you might be able to bear it before you break down you're gonna break through god's gonna see you out of whatever situation that you're in it's not why we we know why the devil is crazy as hell we just need to know how long God how long you see I'm not asking the Lord anymore why is this happening in America and around the world I'm simply asking him right now how long God before it's over I'm going to God and say God how long are you gonna let this last God I'm saying how long are we gonna be divided God how long is this virus gonna be out here how long are we gonna be sequestered in quarantine how long before the people of God can be the people of God freely and holy again how long before I get my shout back how long before I get my praise back how long before I get my anointing back how long before you open another door how long before you y'all not helping me here it's how long it's not why how long God and when the saints of God get on one accord and start praying right and start praying God is sovereign. So listen to those even at the end of the world. As I'm studying the book of the Revelation, during the Great Tribulation, there's chapter 5 of Revelation and chapter 6 where there are martyrs that are found under the throne of God in heaven. In heaven, under the throne of God. People that have been martyred, killed for their witness, their testimony, and their faith. Revelation 6.10. They shouted to the Lord, and watch the sovereignty, and said, O oh, sovereign Lord, they know, watch this, who's in charge, holy and true. How long before you judge the people who belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they have done to us? <clears throat> y'all miss that. Sovereign Lord, do y'all hear that? Sovereign, they're in heaven, 
They know who's in charge. They know that there's but one that sits on the throne. So because they know that God is in control of what's going on in the earth, and because they know that God is too just not to give recompense of reward, that God is vengeful and vengeance is his, they say to him, not why were we martyred? Why are we under this throne? They say to him, how long before you avenge us? How long before you set the record straight? How long before we come back with you and rule? and reign on this earth with you how long they're asking how long there appears to be a set time help me Lord before God starts to turn things around there's a set time there's an appointed time there's a kairos moment where God begins to turn things around we've been saying turn it around turn it around God turn it around and God says I will in time and so our response ought to be well how long <laughs> not why is this happening but how long I believe that if we can ask God how long and that if we pressure enough it's called importunity it's like when the man had people come to town and he had nothing to feed so he went to his friend's house and he knocks on the door and, and, and the friend said I'm busy I can't come he kept knocking he kept knocking he kept knocking he kept he kept knocking he kept knocking he kept till the man finally gets up and wait you know keep not it's importunity he says here's how you pray our father which are in heaven how be done in a kingdom come that will be done on earth then he says now there was a man that had that needed something and didn't have it and went and then the man was tired of the knocking and gave it to him God said that's how I am if you keep asking if you keep seeking if you keep knocking if you keep saying how long how long if I know you're serious if I know you wanted to get up off you if I know you want me to step in if I know you want me to do something if I know you know I'm sovereign if I know you know I'm in control if I know you know I'm providential if I know you know that I am God all by myself I'll step in right in the nick of time so this ought to help somebody because key is Elijah and the others in the scriptures are mere humans so many people believe that God only works for a certain kind of person. But James 5.17 says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. I don't know whether you know what that means, but another translation says this. James 5.17 says, Elijah was as human as we are. Now, sometimes Elijah, like many of us, allowed his humanity to be greater than his divinity. We all have a divine nature. We are partakers of the divine nature of God. There's a bit of divinity in all of us. But sometimes, and I can get three people to say amen to this, I might feel better. Sometimes your humanity gets the best of your divinity. Amen. Don't feel bad about it. It happened to Jesus. Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane about the whole matter of the cross. And he even said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me humanity but divinity says nevertheless not as i will but thy will be done divinity humanity and divinity how many of you find yourself sometimes having to beat down your humanity sometimes you have to beat down your way of thinking your intellect your reasoning your fears your troubles sometimes his humanity get the best of him so we see that he was given over to human emotions that's what we're talking about Things like doubt and fear. That's what, as human as we are, frustrations. And yes, even wanting to quit. He's a prophet of God, but he wanted to quit. Jeremiah was a prophet of God, remember? He wanted to quit. But it was like fire. Shut up in his bones. Moses got so sick of those people, he wanted to quit. Trying to lead people through a wilderness that didn't want to go nowhere, didn't want to do nothing, acting a fool, missing the world. Was, did I say Moses? Bishop McLaughlin, he wanted to quit. Peter and the disciples, they did quit. Peter said, I go fishing. And they went back to fishing and Jesus shows up on the shore. Quit. Elijah had his faith challenge. Even though he's known as a man of faith, a man of power, and a man of anointing. That's what he's known as, man of faith, power, and anointing. But look at how human and yet how powerful he was. We know he's human, but look at the power, James 5, 17, 18. Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Glory to God. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. This man was so human, and yet he could pray and 
heavens shut up for three and a half years. He shut up heaven. Y'all don't miss that. For three and a half years. Then he prayed again and heaven releases his reign and healing comes to the land. That's Elijah. And we all know the story of how he called down fire on Mount Carmel and killed the prophets of Baal, the ones who worked for Queen Jezebel. And then Jezebel hears about this from her weak, sorry husband Ahab. And then Jezebel gets hot and says, I'm going to take him out tomorrow. And then uh, Elijah's humanity uh, overrides his divinity. After he done called down fire, after he's had the strength to kill all the prophets. And then chapter 19, now Ahab, verse 1, told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that one of them, like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid. Somebody say afraid. And ran for his life and when he came to Beersheba in Judah he left his servant there and while he himself went a day's journey running into the desert he came to a broom tree sat down under it and prayed that he might die I have had enough Lord he said take my life I'm no better than my ancestors then he laid down under the tree and fell asleep uh, he just wanted to die just a threat from a woman a threat he's killed all of her prophets he's demonstrated that God can sit fire down from heaven his God has been declared as God even King Ahab said that Elijah's God he is God it was a test of gods who are no gods there's only but one God and there's no God beside him God had just proved that through this holy man and through this man of faith power and anointing Elijah and he gets word that a woman in a palace is gonna whoop him and he takes off running his humanity gets the best of him and he wants to die he wants to give up he wants to quit he just says God I've had enough he even said to God I'm the only one left God had to check him and say listen there's 7,000 more that haven't bowed their knee to Baal there's a whole lot more folk like you seven is a number of completion there's a whole lot of folk out here and that's what we need to know we ain't the only ones standing on the wall we're not the only ones crying out to God we're not the only one preaching the gospel we're not the only one holding up the bloodstained banner we're not the only one declaring him Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our victory, our banner. No, there's 7,000 more. There's people all over the world. There's people in Africa. There's people in Australia. There's people in Europe. There's people in Russia. There's people in Saudi Arabia. There's people in South America. There's people in Antarctica. There's people in Newfoundland. There's people in New Zealand. There's people in Antarctica. all over the world. God says, I got me a remnant. And God's never been left without a representation in the earth. Never been left without a remnant. If you ever get to the point to where you think everything depends upon you, you're going to be of all men most miserable. I know I got me some help. I know that there's some folk interceding. I know that there's some people praying. I know that there's many more. The reason this place hasn't been destroyed is because God got some people here and he's not appointed them to wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason the Lord is tarrying, if some of y'all want to know where he is, he's not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. And even in the worst trials of our life, even in this time of tribulation and testing, we still got to share our witness. Like the two witnesses in the book of Revelation, we still got to preach. Like the 144,000 in the book of Revelation, we still got a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Your word is still needed. Your testimony is still needed. Come on, your hands are still needed. Your feet are still needed even right now I wish I had somebody I wish I had somebody that understood when we think of that prayer that we call the prayer of faith the prayer of faith will save the sick and they committed any sins even the sins will be forgiven them we attribute that to Elijah because it was Elijah that it was in reference to James 5 16 the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The fervent effectual prayer of a righteous man, King James, availeth much. So this verse is, is reference to Elijah's prayer for the rain to stop and the rain to start. It, it shows you that if you pray hard enough, if you pray long enough, if you pray right, 
God to move. So let me show you how this fervent prayer worked. 1 Kings 18.41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. Now remember, they had just had the battle on Carmel. Elijah's killed all the prophets. He's proven that God is God. But there was a drought in the land. Hadn't rained for three and a half years. So Elijah's filling himself. Elijah said, now you king, get up. I want you to see something. Get something to drink. There's a sound. Because it's going to be a journey. They're in a valley. You're going to have to get out of here. So get you something to eat and drink right now. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. I feel something. God has moved. He's proven himself. And I feel something. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody who, you know, every now and then God will send you a bouquet of roses. God will blow you a kiss. Or God will do something to let you know that he hadn't forgotten about you. Whenever God sends you something or gives you a little tip. Or whenever God gives you a preview of a coming attraction. You ought to get excited because you know there's more to come. You know that this ain't all God can do. You know he can do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. You know that God is an abundant God. He's a God of plenty. He's a God of much more than that. And so he's seen what God can do. And now he hears the sound of abundance of rain. What God wants to do through you, you've got to first feel it in your spirit. You've got to hear a sound. You've got to smell, the Bible says, the scent of water. There's the scent of water, that which comes before the rain comes. Elijah knows this is God. So he goes into fervent and effectual prayer and God will do his part when we do ours. Amen. People expect God to move for them and James says, you know what? You have not because you ask not. Some of y'all are wanting God to move God. I need you to step in. God will you and but you're not asking him you're saying it in your head you got to say it with your mouth you got to let him know you mean business fervent and effectual prayer is heard and they prayed with a loud voice and they cried out to God come on his ear is not deaf that he cannot hear but God wants you to hear him he said call on me while I'm near seek me while I may be found open up your mouth you know I believe one of the problems here with the body of Christ right now we ain't praying right because we ain't praying out we're not praying loud enough we're not praying long enough we're not praying effectual and fervent prayers we're saying now I lay me down to sleep I ask the Lord we're waking up saying good morning Jesus but during the day we haven't had a little talk with Jesus and told him all about our struggles we got to do that every day all day can you imagine if every time you go outside and you see the conditions like they are and if you were to say to God God I see that and God I I see that God would you bless him God would you bless her when I see people walking down the street with shopping carts right now with no mask on homeless still sleeping on the streets right now in this type of environment don't you know that does something inside of me and makes me intercede for people that I don't even know let me help y'all you just can't pray for people that you know and people that you love God rain falls on the just and the unjust when Elijah prays this prayer everybody's gonna be blessed the enemy is going to be blessed. Come on, his people going to be blessed. Everybody's going to be blessed. Wouldn't you like to be the kind of believer that when your praise goes up, when your prayers go up, that when you call on God like Paul and Silas in the prison, they were in chains, but their praise got everybody else set free. People that were bound were made whole. Come on, y'all. This is not a selfish thing for you only. This is for you on the behalf of others. I sought me a man that was standing in the gap and God took because somebody stood in the gap and if you stand in the gap he'll spare people he'll save people and I believe that God's going to move I'm going to get here in a minute because what God wants to do through you you have to first feel it in your spirit you got to first hear that sound Elijah knows that it's God 1 Kings 18 42 and Elijah or Ahab went up to eat and drink just like the prophet said and Elijah went up to the mount on top of Carmel the mountain then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees look at this position
vision and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. Putting his face between his knees is a position, a posture of prayer where he went in fervent and effectually. He went into God, positioned himself. His servant sees this and he says to the servant, I need you now go up and look toward the sea. I'm praying for rain. I just need to see if rain is coming. Just go up. You go up and see. I'm going to stay right here and pray. He prayed to God believing that God is fitting to send rain and God is fitting to heal the land. When you pray, believe. <laughs> When you pray, believe, and you shall then have those things which you ask. You got to believe that God is going to do it. He prayed and he said, now you go look. He put faith. He put works to his faith. James says, faith without works is dead. I could have just preached from James. Being alone, you got to put some works with your faith. So he tells his servant to go and look for the answer to the prayer that he was praying. This is interesting to me because the servant is watching Elijah and seeing what he's doing. And if it doesn't work, it could easily affect this man's psyche and his belief in Elijah's God. And that's what so many people are dealing with today. Unbelieving family members are looking at you while you're praying and saying, well, if your God is real, then why is all this going on? If your God is real, then why are these people dying? If your God is real, then why is there so much? Anybody know what I'm talking about? There's some people that you try to, some of y'all don't share your faith at all, but for those of us who do, there's some doubters and unbelievers and scoffers and mockers out here that are trying to mock our God and saying to you, look at you. You ain't got no job no more. Look at you. You can hardly be, look at you, waiting on a stimulus. Say, look at you. You need a look at you. Where is your God? Where is your God? And that's what people are doing. Now, if this thing doesn't work, this service can say well Elijah I mean he called down fire I saw that and yeah he did this and that but now he's tempting his God and his God ain't answering here and, and so many people think that because God doesn't answer immediately that he ain't gonna answer Come on, I wish Daniel was here. Daniel prayed 21 days. And when it was all said and done, God said, I heard you on the first day. But can you imagine God hearing you? And if God hears you, it's as if he answers you. It's as good as done. Can't you imagine he praying for 21 days, warring in the heavenlies and ain't no manifestation? But the Bible says he didn't stop praying. For 21 days he prayed. And then he finally got the manifestation. 21 days is a complete number. May not be 21 days on the calendar. It could just barely be a long time or a complete time prayed until he got the manifestation prayed until he got the answer prayed until he got the breakthrough prayed until the answer showed up prayed until he saw what he was saying prayed until that child came home prayed until that marriage got right prayed until the money got right prayed until the job called you back prayed until the pandemic was over prayed until your mama got healed prayed until your daddy got healed prayed until God took him home so look at what the servant says in return he comes back after going up to look verse 43 so he went up and looked and said there's nothing Elijah's got his head between his legs and calling on God James said it's fervent and effectual he said, now, I'm praying, you go look. He comes back, he says, what did you see? Nothing. You never had nobody, while you praying, say, what you praying for? Ain't nothing happening? Come on, anybody here ever prayed? I know you hear me at home. <laughs> I know you hear me. You're praying. It don't look like nothing happening. You want to get out of that house and get here, but you ain't getting no breakthrough. You ain't heard God release you. Some of y'all are so funny. God's got to release you to come back to the house of God, but he ain't got to release you to go to Walmart. He ain't got to release you to go to Home Depot. He ain't got to release you to go to the brick and get some of them shrimp and grits. He ain't got to release you to go to Nashville and sit in there. He ain't got to release you. And he looked and he said, there's nothing. Oh, that I wish some people would just see what's going on here. So many people who are alone right now want to quit, who are praying, ain't nothing happened, who are saying God has forsaken me. 
but Elijah, not Elijah. Elijah did not pay attention to what his natural senses said. He paid attention to what the word of God says. And then when there was no natural sign, y'all got to help me close this, that God heard his prayer, he sent the servant back to look again. There was no sign. I see nothing. Okay. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Well, before then, Jesus hadn't come, died yet. Father God in heaven, I pray that rain would come. Rain, God, we need rain. Nothing happened. Nothing's working. It appears his prayer has failed. But he says to the servant, regardless of the way things appear, boy, with confidence, he says, verse 42, go again. And seven times, oh, he says, go again. Seven times. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. Get the picture now. Go again. Go again, go again, go again, go again, go again, go again. Seven times, I'm praying, I don't see nothing, go again. On the seventh time, the servant comes back and says, I did see something. It was like a cloud the size of a fist of a man's hand. He prayed, nothing happened. He prayed again, 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 and then a little something happened. Yeah, a little something happened. But it was enough to let him know that God had heard him. It was enough to let him know that what he had prayed for had got through the throne of God. Sometimes we have to look for a little sign. Sometimes we got to look for signs that say that help is on the way. God's got this. He's heard me. Folk are dying, y'all, left and right right now. I've done everything I can to keep folk alive. I don't see a whole lot of manifestation, but I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing because I believe that after a while eventually we are gonna get to victory I don't see anything really right now it looks bad literally right now but I'm telling y'all I hear the sound of the abundance of rain I feel like God's getting ready to shower out on us y'all can start looking for it saints of God start looking for it I prophesy I hear the sound I prophesy there's a hand there's a cloud like a man's hand I prophesy I know you don't see it, but keep looking for it because it's coming. Why? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So I don't care how things look right now. I don't care how things feel right now. If it don't look like it's working right now, just keep trying till it does. I'm going to preach myself happy and I'm going to go home. I ain't put no coat on today because I felt like running. I didn't put no jacket, no shirt on with a collar of the day because I just didn't feel like it. I felt like I was going to sweat. If I'm going to sweat, why would I put on something I'm going to sweat in that I can't even sweat in, but I'm not supposed to sweat in it because it's dry clean on it. So I'm here today because I can throw this in the washing machine today when it's all over because I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And, and, and I knew I was going to run when I read the text when the Bible said that Elijah, uh, that, that when the rain did start, that, that, that Elijah girded up his, 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 little, his little skirt that they wore back in the day and the chariot was rolling out of the thing and he came running by the chariot. He's 80 something years old and he came running by the chariot. Good God about it. I knew I was going to run today. I knew I was going to shout today. I knew we was going to get a breakthrough today. So watch this y'all. Naaman, you got to see this was a mighty man of God. The Bible said that Naaman was a mighty soldier but Naaman was a leper and he had to dip not one time, not two times, not three times, not four times, not five times, not six times, but seven times he had to dip. And when he finally did, because he didn't give up, because he didn't quit, the Bible said he was healed of his leprosy. It may not feel like it. It may not look like it. Every time he went down and came up, every time he went down, 
now he still had leprosy but on the seventh time good God Almighty because he didn't quit he wasn't successful but then after a while eventually he got his breakthrough there was a man laying by a pool for 38 years with palsy he tried every time the waters were stirred to get in the pool but somebody always got in before him so one day he's still there he comes again he kept coming 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 38 years he kept coming he kept coming and he kept trying and then when he kept coming and kept trying one day Jesus shows up and Jesus asks what's going on and he gives him this sad story about people getting in before him because he can't get in himself always too late when the angels troubles the water so Jesus looks at the man and says since you didn't give up since you didn't quit since you're still here arise take up your bed and walk y'all not helping me here he got up off of the bed because he didn't quit. I'm trying to help somebody here because there was a lame man that was laid at the gate beautiful every day. An ugly situation in a beautiful gate. And every day he asked of arms. Every day he knew that somebody would have to just give him something to make it through the day. But he was at the temple. He was at the gate. They were going up to prayer. Maybe somebody would have faith enough maybe to pray for him that he might be healed. So he's laid daily at the gate. I said daily at the gate I said daily at the day he didn't take a day off he came daily anticipating hoping he had never walked he didn't know what it's like to walk he see men walking but he can't even phantom what it's like to walk himself but he came daily and because he kept coming daily one day Peter and John were coming up to the temple to pray and in the name of Jesus they said to him rise up and silver and gold have we none I can't give you what you think you need I'm gonna give you what you really need that's what you want but this is what you need get up and the Bible said strength came to his ankles and to his legs and to his feet and he went leaping and praising and dancing in the temple and the people saw him people knew who he was and the people said Shut up! this is God glory to God there was a woman with an issue of blood had spent every dime she had had been to every doctor she knew how she had been everywhere she can go she tried this doctor tried that doctor tried this medicine tried that medicine and she was no whit better nothing could help her but then one day she said to herself I hear Jesus is coming through town I'm gonna give it one last try I'm gonna press my way the crowd was around Jesus you couldn't get to him if you wanted to the CIA the FBI selective service they had him covered but this woman who everybody said was unclean this woman who shouldn't have been out in public this woman who's not fit to touch the hem of his garment made it up in her mind that if I can but touch the hem of his garment I believe I'll be made whole she had to press her way knock down she had to crawl stepped on she had to keep coming they pushed her away but then finally she reaches out she touches the hem of his gum Jesus said somebody touch me the disciple said everybody touching you he said no y'all just following me y'all just hanging around me somebody touched me and I'm telling y'all church folk you can touch him right in the middle of a crowd you can touch him right where you are you can touch him where everybody's shouting and everybody's dancing and running you can touch him and you can be made well she touched him and the Bible says that she was made whole they tried to stop her they told her to shut up they did everything they knew how to do to run away but Jesus Jesus said she tried and she tried and then she told him everything that she had tried good God Almighty and she was made whole Nathan was still a leper the man that was by the waters was still sitting by the water the man that was laying on the bed asking arms was on his bed the woman with an issue of blood was unclean for a long time but because they did not quit because they did not give up what's your issue what's your problem what's your challenge what's your prayer what you need God to do for you what you want God to do for you good God Almighty we can't give up now you may not see it but don't give up now prayer right now prayer right
right now for me it, it doesn't seem to be working but I promise you I'm gonna keep on praying I, it didn't look like this thing gonna stop but I promise you I'm gonna keep on praying the world doesn't seem to be working like it ought to be working for so many people right now but I promise you this word that I'm preaching so many people don't get it but I promise you I'm gonna keep on preaching it whether they're here or whether they're forbear because faith come by hearing hearing by the word of God I'm gonna preach it come hell or high water I may not see the manifestation people may not be coming from everywhere but I promise you preach the word be instant in season out of season his word shall not return unto him void it'll accomplish in the thing in which he sent it that which he purposed it's coming back it's not gonna be worth may not be producing the harvest that you expect it to but you got to keep giving keep sowing people are not responding to your witness like you may hope them to but you got to keep witnessing last Sunday I preached a message and said hit it again strike it again listen to the encouraging so many people were encouraged I got calls and inboxes from all over the world pastors hitting it again leading pastors pastors that we're watching on television that are boosting their ratings because of the pandemic right now saying they're gonna hit it again and all I'm trying to do is be obedient to God but I said in that message that a certain thing we have to decree and declare and it's those things that God says that we can have and I said, we need to stand on it. And I knew it was going to be tested. Every time a word. The Bible said that the word that Joseph received was tested until the day that it came to pass. I didn't know how soon the test was going to come. But this past week, it's been one thing after another. I prayed for a woman and she died. I prayed for a man last week and he died. I prayed for a man out of town here. He died. Prayed for a man in California on the phone with his son and he died. I Many of you already know what happened to me just Monday of this past week. This is what I thought was the test and why I chose this topic today. I had a chance to apply that message. Earlier this year, last year, I said, this thing was getting to me. I didn't ask God why. But I preached that we would be going into the nursing homes and no longer saying goodbye mama, grandmama. How many remember that? I said, we'll be saying, come on, let's go home. COVID-19 shut the doors on us. We can't even go into the nursing homes. For a minute there, I said, God, what? But I decreed and I declared that we're gonna go into these nursing homes and rescue our grandmom and them. And things are worse in nursing homes than they are literally anywhere else in the world. God, it ain't working. I know you showed it to me. You see, now the beginning of the message, there's so many people that know they're doing what God told them to do and saying what God told them to say and believe in God. But it ain't working yeah. come on y'all earlier when I said that you said nothing now, now, now I'm trying to make it make sense to you why you should have been shouting I said we can pray the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith can save the sick 
I said that. And then this past week, I get a call from a man that I love dearly, his family. A man who worked with me, walked with me, traveled with me. And I got the word that he had just died. I got mad at the devil and I rebuked fear off family and from my own life, the horror that I felt for the moment shouldn't have happened. Just talked to him a week ago. So I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there for the family. I'm going to be there for the wife. So I got on the phone and I called. Couldn't get through to her, got through to the family member that was there. Text her, she texted me back. Thank you, thank you for checking up on me. I got the text, thank you. Another day went by, I, it's in my spirit. I called. I got her on the phone. I prayed. I rebuked death, dying. I stood on the word. I trusted God. I believed. I heard a word say this. Thank you, Bishop, for thinking about me and calling me. And I heard her say to her niece, that was so kind of Bishop to call me and to pray for me and to pray with me. He didn't have to do that. I haven't seen her in years. But years don't remove love and compassion and care. So I prayed because her husband had just died and her son is infected with COVID-19. She, He's upstairs, she's living in a basement, both quarantined because she also has the virus. I prayed the prayer of faith. I prayed a fervent and effectual prayer. I got off the phone with her and just a few minutes later, she fell in the arms of her niece, closed her eyes, and died. Now, 17-year-old son, only child, loses his mother and his father in the house. He watched them both carried out on stretchers from the house while he has to stay quarantined in the house. And there was something in me. I almost asked God why. But instead of asking why, I got ticked off. And I said, God, how long before you avenge the hour of blood at the hands of our enemy? How long? before you cause this to cease. God spoke in my spirit and said, this is a war. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness. So I started looking at war, and in war there are always casualties. In war there's gonna be crippling, there's gonna be death, there's gonna be people that are gonna be lost. It's a war, but we might lose the battle, but we win the war. You might lose a skirmish, but you win the war. In other words, when it appears that it ain't working, you just gotta keep trying till it does. So if somebody else calls me, I'm going to pray again. If somebody else needs me, I'm going to pray again. If somebody else wants me to touch and agree with them, I'm going to touch and agree with them. You can't stop. You can't stop because it doesn't look like it's working. You got to know that eventually, eventually God is going to bring an end to this. Eventually it's going to be over. But will he find faith? We got to stay faithful and focused. We got to keep doing what he told us to do. Whether it looks like it's working or not. We can't stop saints all over the world. Don't you quit praying. Don't you quit praying.
praise him. Don't you quit worshiping. Don't you quit fellowshipping. Don't you quit studying that word. Don't you quit witnessing. Don't you quit soul winning. Don't you quit giving to the kingdom. Don't you get giving to the poor. Don't you quit. Don't you get. Don't you quit. Don't you. you keep going. If they fall on your right hand and your left, it won't come nigh you. Just keep obeying God. Keep doing the will of God. God's got your back. He's sovereign. So we don't have to ask why. How long? How long, oh God? And some of you at home, you're asking how long? You move past why? Because you've understood the sovereignty of God. He's in control. And you're asking how long? And I already told you, the refiner sits by the fire. And however long that it takes for everybody else that he needs to line up to get it together, that's how long it's going to take. But in the meantime, he'll give every one of us a little Goshen, a little place of reserve, a little space where he'll protect us and keep us in perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed on him. My deliverance does not depend upon somebody else. No, what God's going to do for me, he's going to do for me. And I hope everybody else gets it because what's mine is mine. I need somebody to be selfish right now. J-Bass said, God bless me. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory and keep the enemy off of me. I don't want to stay here for me. I want to stay here for others. For me to, be, to leave here is better for me, but it's better for you that I stay. And there's certain people, they need your voice. This worship that you hear emanating from this worship center during these times, many of you have told me have blessed your hearts, have helped you. You could feel and sense the anointing through your cell phone, through your laptop, through your computer, and even on your television, YouTube, and all these other stations. You sense the presence of God. Why? Because under pressure, when the olive is crushed, the oil flows. And we're operating under pressure. We're operating under stress and strain. It's tough on everybody. Everybody's saying, God, how long? Everybody's saying, God, hurry. Everybody's saying, God, what you gonna do? Everybody, everybody's, their humanity is, is exceeding their divinity. Everybody getting on everybody's nerve. Everybody's needing a break. Everybody needs a breakthrough. Everybody needs God to step in and do something. Everybody. So we're operating, being crushed. We're operating under pressure. When we're weak, then we're strong. Wrong. what you're feeling is the overflow of the crushing of the breaking of the weight that's on us because we're trying to do the will of God in the midst of trouble and it doesn't look like it's working but look at us we keep on trying 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 and we're gonna keep on coming and we're gonna keep on coming and we're gonna keep on coming we're gonna keep on coming and we're gonna keep on coming and we're gonna keep on coming we'll never quit we'll never stop we'll never throw in the time we'll never old people say God don't need no coward soldiers Father God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies we thank you for power and affliction. We thank you, God, for strength in our struggle. We thank you, God, for this revelation. We thank you, God, that though it may look like we're surrounded, we realize we're surrounded by you. There's nothing that can by any means harm us that you don't have a remedy for. Even if we die, you didn't come to kill us. You came to save us, to give us a home in glory. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And that time is in your hands. How we live our lives is in our hands. 
Help us to live lives of faith. Because everybody in Hebrews 11 died in faith, not receiving the promise. Cut in half, fed to lions, driven through with spears, crucified upside down. They didn't receive the promise. But when they left here, you had a home. You received them unto himself. You have a, a mansion prepared, a space, a room for us all. Those under the altar, God, they cry, how long, how long? And here we are, God, at the altar today, alive on planet Earth. And we're saying, how long, how long before you avenge our blood? How long, how long before you avenge this death and dying? How long, how long before you avenge the sicknesses that are in the lives of people? How long, how long before you avenge the taking of our funds and our jobs and our careers? How long, God, how long? How long? Give us endurance. Help us to know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait on the Lord and you'll strengthen their hearts. Help us to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Help us not to be weary and well doing. Help us to hold on until the change comes. And if it doesn't look like it's going to happen, we ain't changing nothing. We're going to believe you until the day that we see you. We trust you with everything because you're sovereign God and you're in control. In Jesus' name, amen. If God is in control of your life, put those hands together and bless him right now in that house in that den in that bedroom on that back porch in that car pull them on the side of the road if you have to and give god a shout i dare you somebody needs to see you pull over jump out and give god a praise they're gonna wonder what's wrong with you don't worry about it they ask you what's the matter with you say you're saved sanctified and you're running for your life if anybody asks you what's the matter with you tell them i'm saved i'm sanctified and i'm running for my life hallelujah because living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried all my sins away rising he justified me freed me forever and one day he's coming back again Glory. when i think of the goodness of jesus and all that he's done for me my soul cries hallelujah I thank God for saving me. Listen, y'all, somebody out there, it's been months since you got a shout on now. It's been months since you ran around a building. now. It's been months since you jumped up and down in the house of God. Now. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, somebody here right now, I don't need you all over each other, but right there where you are, in the name of Jesus, I want you to throw your head back, reach way down, and give God the biggest shout that you can give him. Give God Got the biggest shout open <laughs> open up your mouth and scream he's gonna give you that breakthrough he's gonna give you that breakthrough open up your mouth praise him in advance thank him in advance thank him at home in advance thank him in advance don't hold your peace the Lord's fighting your battle he's on the scene right now somebody somebody throw your head back Somebody scream! Hallelujah! Shout in here! Hallelujah! Hey! Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Lord! Yeah. Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord. Come on, I'm trying to close this, but yes, Lord. I told you I felt something in my spirit today. Yes, yes Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Glory, glory. Oh, yeah. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified.
to say, living in love me, dying in saving me. Come on, bearing in care my sins far away. Come on, riding in justify, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. Living in love me, dying in saving me. Jesus into your heart. Don't quit on him. Don't give up. Wait on the Lord. Wait on him. God's going to work it out. Even when it don't look like it. When it appears not to be working. Just keep trying. Keep trying till it does. Just keep trying till it does. How many of y'all to make that pledge with me tonight, today, all over the world? It's night somewhere. That is, you're gonna keep trying till it does work. And you just keep pressing your way till it does happen. Just keep showing up until God gives you the breakthrough. Just keep your head between your legs and keep praying fervent and effectual prayers until you see the manifestation. Keep pressing your way through the crowd. Keep laying there if you have to, showing up every day. But do whatever you need to do to be in a position to where God wants to bless you. He can bless you. So until next time, this is Bishop McLaughlin. I say, listen, a message like this, so into this. Be a blessing. I said, some of you expecting God to break through for you financially. You got to keep giving, even during hard times. Isaac sold in the year of famine. And in that same year, he received a hundredfold. Let God speak to your heart. Let God use you. And remember, if you need prayer, if you need to, somebody to pray with you to receive Christ, 1-855-874-4529. If you feel like God has spoken to you, just hit it right here on the line and say, God spoke to me today. I want Jesus to be Lord of my life today. If you were backsliding, hopefully you came home today. Don't take God for granted. And secondly, don't blame God for what you don't see happening. Because eventually, in his due time, after the process of time and the process of affliction, it's going to come to pass. You're going to wind up in that promise one day and look back and know how you made it over. It's been by the grace of Almighty God. I love y'all. And I believe that God's hand is on your life. Trust him in Jesus' name. Bye-bye, y'all. Put your hands on pray you were blessed by this worship experience at the Potter's House. Make sure you share this word with a loved one. And remember, there are four ways that you can give. First, through text giving. Just text the word GIVE to 904-601-1695. Follow the prompts and you will receive a confirmation text thanking you for your gifts. The second way is online giving. Just go to tphim.org and select the giving tab and follow the prompts. And also you can mail in your tithes and offering by sending it to TPHIM at 5119 Normandy Boulevard, Jacksonville, Florida 32205. And lastly, you can 
can give through our Ministry One Church app. Download the app and type in our church name and follow the instructions to give. Once again, we thank you for your continued generosity to the Potter's House. And for those of you who answer the call to salvation, let us know by calling or texting 1-855-TPH-4JAX. That's 1-855-874-4529. And until next time, remember to share this message and stay connected by following us on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel at TPH Jacks. And may God bless you and keep you until our next digital gathering.